Well, once again, a very warm welcome to all my dear students to this radio tele tutoring program. This is your English class with Miss Vue Konyovile from Mount Sinai Higher Secondary School. In our previous classes, we have done three pros, and I'm sure you all enjoyed the story. And today, I've picked up a poem for all of us that is Leisure, written by William Henry Davis. I repeat, Leisure, written by William Henry Davis. You will find that in page number 20 to 21. Page number 20 to 21. Before getting into the poem, we will, I will give you a little bit of word meanings you will come across the word care. And the word care here will refer to the works and the worries of life. Bow means the branches of trees. And rich means to make something more beautiful or to develop more. You will also get into the rhyming scheme, which we will do it after we finish the explanation of the poem. I would like to request all my dear students to get hold of your book. That is in page number 20 and 21. Page number 20, we have the poem. Let's all read the poem together. Leisure. What is this life, if full of care, we have no time to stand and stare, no time to stand beneath the boughs and shear and stare as long as sheep or cows, no time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in the grass, no time to see in broad daylight, Streams full of stars like skies at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this if full of care. We have no time to stand and stare. William Henry Davis. Okay, so that is our poem. And let's first discuss about the title of the poem, Leisure. I'm sure you have come across the word leisure. Leisure here means the free time that you have to do anything that you want. I'm sure your parents give you free time, especially when you go to the classes, you come back home, you get your refreshments, and there will be a time when your parents will allow you to play or do whatever you want. Those are called your leisure time. And so the poet William Henry Davis is going to talk about the importance of leisure time. See, in this world, everyone, you see your parents getting very busy. They go to offices or they go to some other works. They come home. Even after reaching home, they hardly get time to rest. This is what the poet is talking about. And he says that it is important for everyone to have leisure time. And for that matter, you see even you yourself at this class 5 stage. You, you all are class 5 students. And so, even at this young age, you know sometimes you get burdened with works. You hardly get time to rest on some weekdays. And you will see that you have a lot of your homeworks, home assignments to be done. You have your, your lessons to be covered for the next day's test. This is what we have in our life. And when I say this, I'm not saying that it is wrong to work. It is very important for all of us to work. but. It is also important for us to maintain a balance. If a person keeps working without getting any time of rest, there might be a time when that person will feel sick. And so that is going to affect the health. And this is what we are going to talk about. But from the first place, I'm going to request every one of you to stay steady, to be patient and listen to me, and also keep in mind that when I say leisure is important, I also want all of you to know that your work is also as important as leisure time. That's what I want all of you to know. The poet talks about the beauty of nature. He talks that he says that nature is beautiful in so many ways, but we humans do not have time for those things. He, he says that the branches of the trees are very beautiful, but we don't have time to look at those things. He also mentions the cows and the sheep here. He says that the cows and sheep can stand and stare, but human beings cannot do like them. We hardly get the time to stand and see how nature is, even though all around us, we are surrounded by the beautiful nature. We see the plants, we see the birds chirping around, but there are times that we do not notice all these things because we are so concerned about the works that we have. He says that what is this life if full of care? 
Here, the poet tells us that life would not be interesting and life cannot be interesting if we are filled with worries and works and cares. That is what he is trying to make us understand. He tells us that life can never become interesting if you are just so focused on a work and we, you lose to have the interest in the nature and the beauty around you. He says that the cows and the sheep can stand and steer. They can enjoy the beauty of nature around them. But that is what we humans fail at times. The poet talks about the streams, the beauty. During the day, what you, I'm sure you have been to a riverside in one of your days. And so if you go to the riverside, the streams, we see the rivers, the waters flowing, sparkling in the sunlight. Those become like the stars at night. The stars twinkle, you all know that. I have seen the stars twinkle, and so you have seen the st stars twinkling at night. And so what the poet is telling us here is that there are some people who do, who do not even notice the beauty that you see in the sparkle of the waters, in the water. If, if you have not seen this, you can even have spare your time and go to a small by stream and watch at it on a sunny day. What you will see is, you will see the the rivers flowing very smoothly and when they come when they come to the pebbles you will see that the waters sparkle when the sun shines on it this is the beauty that we sometimes tend to forget to see we don't notice it and the poet also tells us that when we walk across the wood, that means when you go to the forest, the jungle, I'm sure you have all been to a jungle or maybe even around your house, especially for the ones who are staying in village. It's so beautiful. When you walk around the forest, what you see is you see the birds flying around, you see them chirping, and you will even see the squirrels. They will, they will keep the nuts, they will hide the nuts under the ground, but there are many people who have not noticed this because they are not concerned about what the creatures in the woods are doing. They are just worried about the works that they have. They will just be working in a hurried manner. And this is the reason why we fail to see the beauty, the nature. See how nice it will be if you are going to see a squirrel hiding the nuts. We never think of these things, but you, you have to realize sometimes these corals will hide their nuts under the ground, they will bury it, and they might even forget the places. And so from there, even the trees grow up. Many of you will be aware of this, but many of us are ignorant about all these things. When you picture it, I want all of you to come along to the imaginary world with me. Just try to picture a squirrel trying to hide the nuts under the ground because it feels that it needs to hide them so that he will come and get it some other day. Because imagine if a squirrel had gathered a lot of nuts, how will it carry? Because unlike human beings, they will not be carrying a bag along with them. So what they do is they will hide the nuts under the ground. They will bury it and they will take the few that they, have, they are able to carry maybe from their mouth. And so when they run to their place of hiding, they will hide those things and they will come back to get it. But there are times that they even forget the places where they have hidden the nuts. And so from there, even the trees grow up. These are some things that we fail to realize. And the poet also begins to talk of how we fail to see the, the, the nature dancing around us. Here, we, here the poet says that we don't stand to have a glance at the nature dancing around us. Nature dances in so many different ways. We may think that dance can only be done along with the music, the song that we have in our manly world. But here, there can be another music, another kind of music that you find in nature. And those music, if you really listen to it, you will, you will find that they are far more better than the music that we have developed. You listen to the songs, you maybe you have a favorite song, but even after listening to that, you get pleasure. You get the joy that you, that you derive from listening to music. But the better music that the poet is talking here is nature. You will hear the 
the buzzing of the bees. You will hear the, bee, the bees flying around you. They will be making some kind of noise. We call those as buzzing of the bees. And you will even hear the birds chirping, the flowing of the streams, the waters. All those combine together. And even the, when the wind blows against the trees, you hear the leaves moving around. And so all those combine together, he begin to see that nature is dancing around. We, we don't think of all this beauty sometimes because we're just so engrossed. We're just so much into our own world, our own works, that we fail to see the beauty that is all around us. And here the poet regrets. Regretting means he's feeling sad in some ways because human beings do not see the beauty that is all around us. That is also because of the greed. You know what is greed? You, I'm sure you have heard of the word greedy. There are some people who are so greedy, you might have encountered it a lot of times in your neighborhood with your friends. Even if that person, that student or that friend has got something, that person will continue to want more and more. And not only with the younger ones, but also with adults we see that, with elder ones with elderly people, even after getting something, you want to have more and more. And in the run for this one, we also tend to lose the interest that we have in nature. But we have to realize that through nature, we get all the enjoyments, we get all the joys that we never expected. If you just spend an afternoon on a sunny day by the riverside, you will see a lot of things. You will see small sea water creatures in the river, and you might even want to have catch hold of those things. Not because you want to have it, or not because you want to prepare a special meal, but there is enjoyment in all these acti activities. And the poet really wants us to come back to the world of nature, where there is healing. Healing here, when I say healing, I hope you know what is healing. If you see a person sick, that person takes some kinds of medicine and then they get healed, they get better. That is called healing. But healing does not only mean the physical pains that you have. Sometimes you might be worried about so many things. Maybe mentally you are depressed or maybe you are in a difficult situation. You have a hard time at school. You, you might have got some punishments from the teachers at school. But when you come back home, you, you still keep thinking of all those things. And then later, if you have this kind of things, I would also re recommend you to have some time of leisure outside. Walk around if there's a garden around your house. Or you can even go outside and have a look at the beauty that nature provides for each and every one of us. You don't have to buy those kind of healings. When we talk about healing, you go to the medicinal stores, you go to, to the pharmacy, you have to buy something with your money. But here, nature provides healing free of cost. That is what the poet talks about in this poem. He also tells us that we should not be taken away by the greed, by the nature of greed here. We should not be greedy. It's always important for us to work and get more that we need. But in this process, human beings forget the people around them. If you really want to have something, there are some times that students even go to the wrong extent. They want to have something from their friends. But when their friends are not willing, who knows? There might be some people who will even take the, take the property of another friend without taking permission. That is called greed. If you really needed something, your friends will provide for you if you talk to them. But in our greed, from our childhood till the time we measure, we all tend to have that greed in our hearts. And that is the reason why we go wrong in so many areas. And the poet really does not want each and every one of us. That includes you and me. Even as you are listening to this, I want all of us to realize that the poet wants each and every one of us to enjoy the beauty that nature had provided for each and every one of us. And that is going to help us make a better world for each and every one of the people living in this world. And the poet here also tells us that a poor life is when we are all filled with greed. Sometimes we think that poor and rich is decided by the wealth, by the money that you have. But 
we also have to think that the poverty, the rich life does not only mean the amount of money that you have. You might be having a piggy bank at home right now and you are happy because you are able to feel that piggy bank. It's quite heavy. You want to count how much money that you have in that piggy bank. And so that does not determine the wealth you have. Of course, it's important to save money and all the material things that we need in the world. But in this search, in this hunt, we keep hunting for more and more and we tend to forget that wealth is not only the amount of money you have or the, the houses that you have. It also has to do with enjoyment. If you have so much wealth, money, houses, clothes, or anything that you want. Maybe your father has got very good cars. All those are important for our life, I want you to remember. But if you're just thinking about that and you don't enjoy your life, you want more and more, and then you are not happy with what you have, that means you are living a poor life. We think that we are rich when we have all those things. You have good houses, you have nice cars, you have a lot of money, that does not make you rich. Here, richness will refer to the enjoyment that you have. So, the poet has mentioned very clearly that it is the enjoyment deep inside, the joy we have. There are so many rich people who are not happy, and he considers them to be poor. So, I want each and every one of my dear students, listeners here, to know that it is important to have a leisure time as well as to work with a balanced timing. When I say it's important to have leisure time, don't go and tell your parents that teacher has have told you to go for leisure, so you leave all your other works. That's not good. But even if you're working, you also need to find time to enjoy time with your parents. Here we can enjoy in a lot of different ways. You can stay with your parents and discuss the stories. You can listen to the folk tales that your parents will tell you. These are some kinds of enjoyment that we have. And so the poet has mentioned to us very clearly the rich and the poor, the difference that we have. And you will regret after some years if you are not able to have a proper leisure time and enjoy the nature around you. That is. With this, we come to the conclusion of a poem, but I'm going to mention a little bit more about rhyming scheme. You will read more about rhyming scheme when you go up to higher classes. Before getting into the rhyming scheme of this poem, I'm sure you all know the rhyme, twinkle, twinkle, little star. See, I want, I'll read the first two lines. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Star and R sound similar. We call that as rhyming scheme. In our first, if you look at your textbook, in the first line, in the first two lines, you will see the last word care and steer. And so, as these two words sound similar, it is rhyming very well with one another. We call this as AA. And in the second line, you will see the word bows and cows. Even these two sound similar, but different from the first two lines. So, we cannot use AA again, since the first two lines have got AA, the second one will be bows and cows, BB. And the third line, you will see the last two words, pass and grass. And so, as these two sound similar, we will give CC. Why we cannot give AA and BB in the last, in the third line, in the third stanza is because even though these two words sound similar, it's different from the first two stanzas. And so this is how rhyming scheme goes about in poetry. Here, in your higher classes, you will get to know more about this. If you want to write po poems, what you have to know is when your poems rhyme with each other, it sounds better. And you can even compose songs with this kind of rhyming scheme. And you know who is a poet, I'm sure. If you do not know, a poet is a person who writes poetry, who writes poems. Your teachers will even make you memorize. And I would, like to I would like to request each and every student here to memorize this poem. And once you memorize it and you try to recite it, you will see the beauty. And a poem can become more beautiful when the rhyming scheme goes well. In your lower classes, you have been reading rhymes. And now as you have come up to higher classes, I'm calling you the higher classes. I will call you higher classes because class five is at a higher level, during your class AB, you keep reciting the rhymes and you enjoy it. But 
poetry is another kind of rhymes at a higher level. So as you go on, some of you might even become poets. And like I said, poets are the persons who write poems. There can be different types of writers. Even the poet here is a writer as well as a poet. That means he even writes other kinds of stories and he writes poems too. And so he is both a writer and a poet. And I, I'm sure there are some students here in this class who can write poems very well. You can try your skills and try to follow the rhyming schemes that you have learned from this class. And I will expect you even in the next class because I'm going to bring a very, very interesting topic to you again. And please follow the routine that has been given out and I'm going to meet you there again. Till then, thank you everyone.